You're watching Meet the Candidates, and today I have the privilege to have here in the studio Tina Cardoso, who's a candidate for Counselor at Large. Tina, welcome. Thank to you, BCA. Mark, for having me. Nice to see you. Yes, nice to see you. Um, we're close to the end of the campaign. Yes. Next Tuesday. Yeah. Um, you are a second time candidate, but a first time candidate for Counselor at, at Large. Yes. That's the whole city of Boston. Right. Now, to me, it makes sense that you're running citywide because you've been involved citywide. Right, right. The organization that you're involved in. Um, K Verde and Women United. And you're still, I know you're running for office, but you're still doing Absolutely. all of that at the same time. You have Wednesday night meetings. Yes. I, I keep, <laughs> keep in touch and follow you on yes. Facebook today. You just came off of a, a, an old-fashioned like rally in Brockton <laughs> right. for candidates, which, right. which is cool because... Mm. When I was a little kid, they used to do that on a regular basis. It hasn't been done until right, now. Right. What are you hearing out there in, 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 on the streets of Brockton? I'm sure you're knocking on doors, talking to right, people. Right. What are you hearing, Tina? There's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of excitement this year and a lot, of, a lot more people coming out that haven't come out in the past. Actually, over the past uh, four years, mm -hmm. I've seen a big movement. More people are involved, engaged. More people are asking questions, which is good. And I think a lot of different candidates coming out has helped that. So I'm never against, you know, there's never too many candidates to me because I think the more we excite people, the better off we are. So um, the last four years, I think people are just more involved, they're more engaged, there's a lot on social media, people are paying attention, they're reading the newspaper, um, they want to know what's going on in City Hall, they want more transparency, that type of thing. So that can do nothing but better the city to me. So. I definitely agree. Yeah. Um, you know, I, more participation. So mm -hmm. um, when, if you get elected, mm -hmm. What would you do to increase the participation of the residents in Brockton? How would you communicate with them? Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, counselors at large don't do ward meetings. The right. ward counselors do that, but the counselors at large go to all the ward meetings. You right. get to go to seven of them if all seven wards have a meeting. Right. Counselor Sullivan in the past has done a group meeting where mm -hmm. he's gotten the four counselors at large together, mm -hmm. used to include the school committee and the city council. Don't worry about that. Sorry. That's what live TV is all about. <laughs> Who cares if the phone's ringing in the background? Would you um, would you do something like use our television station to communicate with the residents mm -hmm. about Absolutely. That? I think you guys are key. So I've been on Salo Ernestina, which is the Cape Verdean um, program, and yours a few times. Uh, the radio is absolutely critical in passing on information. So I feel like we need to do more of that. The counselors need to come out more, maybe have folks that can translate for them so that they're able to disseminate information to the residents. Um, so residents feel included. So I think they could do a better job at getting folks that speak Spanish, Haitian Creole, Cape Verdean Creole to help them get information out to folks. Because I think that's the missing link. Each time we go to these um, ward meetings, um, there's always the same people there. So we want to make sure that we're including other folks and we could do that by getting people you know to help us with the language capacity. So I think I would be someone that could do that. Speaking the language is very important but like what I do with my organization I um, run my programs in different languages so they're in Haitian Creole, they're in Spanish and they're in Cape Verdean um, Creole so everyone feels included. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's always been my dream, maybe you can help me with this at some point, we do soccer. Mm -hmm. We do it in English. Mm -hmm. But soccer is a bigger sport for, for Cape Verdeans and Haitians. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to have multilingual. You don't have those soundtracks. Right. Art. You know, sometimes people will close caption, but the other language is important. Mm -hmm. I tell all my students my biggest failure in life is not learning another <laughs> language. My dad spoke eight. Right. It's nice to know another language, and I feel like since we're so diverse now in this city, we have to do a better job at getting information. So I'm really excited um, to be working with Mike Thomas. We're trying to utilize the North Junior High School um, to open up a parent center, mm. and that's going to be huge because people from the community can come in there and they can get information that they need in different languages. So my, with my organization, we always bring it back to parental involvement and engagement. And part of that is being able to offer information to people, one, that can't read, 
oh, or it can't read in English, or don't speak English. Um, we need to do a better job. That can only better our communities if people are getting the information that they need in the language that they speak. Um, so that community center, I think, is going to be key for us, and I'm really grateful that Mike is doing such good work to try to get community members together to Mike's do this stuff. Mike's a great stuff. guy. Yeah. Mike's a great guy. So mm -hmm. you have a new sign. Mm -hmm. You have a new slogan. My story is our story. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that for a minute. Let's talk about the Tina Cardoso story and mm -hmm. why it's important to this election. Because I feel like a lot of us in this city, no matter what color we are or where we come from, have the same story. So when I say that, that doesn't mean that my Cape Verdean story is the same or my Haitian story. It's all of our stories. We all have gone through different struggles in our lives. We all raise kids here. I know I did. I raised three. Um, and those challenges that you face, making sure your teenagers are doing the right thing and they're not hanging with the wrong people or, you know, getting into drugs or alcohol, all that stuff. No matter what color we are, we're going through that stuff. And we all have the same um, passion. We all want to be heard. We all want to be included. We want transparency in government. We want to know what's going on with our tax dollars. So my story is that I was a teenage mom. You know, at 16, I dropped out of high school and I had my first child. So I was always really smart. I went to Boston Lat and I was a geek, but I got in with the wrong crowd, mm -hmm. ended up doing things I wasn't supposed to do and had my kids young. So I had to move out at that age, you know, and go and find an apartment. I was a single mom. Um, and then I ended up getting a GED. Um, and I went to Roxbury College for two years, Roxbury Community College, and mm -hmm. then I went on to UMass. And it took me six years, but I finally got my nursing degree all along bringing my kids to school with me, asking the professors if they can sit in the back of the class when I didn't have babysitting and just you know struggling to make sure that my kids didn't have to go through what I went through. And then we moved to Brockton so I can provide them with better school systems and I was so happy I did that. I've been in Brockton 19 years and the kids all graduated from Brockton High and they did well. You know my oldest, like I've told people, she's getting her PhD in psychology right now. She runs St. Francis Homeless Shelter so she homeless um, advocacy is huge for her and I've learned a lot about that through her. Um, and you know homelessness is a big problem in our city. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And your other daughter's a teacher. My other daughter's a teacher, so education is, she's a big advocate for education and more funding. She was instrumental in helping us get the, um, the Students' Opportunity Act. We used to call it Promise Act, but they changed right. the name yeah. to help with that funding and, um, you know, um, working with legislators to get that. Um, and she's a big proponent for more minority, more black teachers um, in the schools and more adjustment counselors. So I learned a lot from my kids. You know, it's funny, you teach your kids, but now I'm learning Absolutely. a lot from my kids. And then my youngest is at UMass Amherst and she's graduating this semester. So they did really well, but I had to be super involved. There was a lot of work. Um, so I want to give that back. I want to teach parents, immigrant parents, who are not used to that parental involvement. Um, in our countries, it's different. The system is different. So I want to be able to educate them ar around that. Like I said, Mark, your neighborhoods are only as good as what you invest in your neighbors. You have to invest in your neighbors. If you don't educate them and help them to assimilate, then you're going to live next door to neighbors that maybe don't know. You know. Um, so I feel like the more I use my experiences to educate people, the better off we are. I always say you can learn something new every day, and mm -hmm. I think I learn more from my students sometimes right. than I teach them. Right. Uh, they keep me young, too. Right. That's another thing. Right. Um, right. So do you, do you think, I know this isn't a city council role, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to ask you this question because it, it has to do with education. Brockton has a huge waiting list right now for mm -hmm. people to learn English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there should be, I think, there should be courses for people for like me to learn Creole. Right. Okay. What could we do better? I, I, I mean, the, we have an adult learning center. They're a great place. Mm -hmm. The different groups, the associations, mm -hmm. the Verdean Association, they have training, but it's not near enough. When, yeah. when I hear mm -hmm. people say, people come here and they don't want to learn English, mm -hmm. 
I don't really it's think that's true. true. It's not true. Because I don't just think we have the capacity and the we don't. space and the funding. We don't. And so I'm hoping that with this new funding for education, maybe some of that can go towards more ESL. I'm not sure how that would you know, work, but I'm hoping that we could, um, we could do that. There are a lot of folks. Harbor One has a program. The right. association has one. Um, we're hoping at North that we're, we would be able to offer more ESL there because mm -hmm. it's important. We have to teach parents English because that's only going to help them with economic independence because they're going to be able to get better jobs and, you know, and then that's going to strengthen the economy. So and you can't depend on the kids to give you all the accurate information. Information as well. We have good kids, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But if a kid's getting an F on a report card, right. they're not going to necessarily right. want to translate right. that to their parent right. because they're they're not. I did it as a, when I was getting into trouble at 16. Paper, um, they were sending notes home from school, and I wouldn't read it to my mom. My mom didn't know how to read. She never even learned how to read. So that information was coming, and I was getting the mail. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's um, we have to teach our parents, one, for this reason, to help the students, and also so that they can do better at work as well. Um, so I'm hoping that we can open up more slots for ESL. Absolutely, we need that in the city. So we're talking about your daughters, we're talking about their education, and one daughter runs a mm -hmm. homeless shelter. Mm -hmm. We're right in the heart of downtown, BCA building, across mm -hmm. the street from Irving's, diagonally across from the homeless shelter. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of let's kick the problem someplace else. Mm -hmm. City, see, it's interesting. The city council is the legislative body. Right. You're, you're the legis You you guys make the laws and the rules and the mm -hmm. ordinances. You supervise the budget. Mm -hmm. The mayor drives the city, and the council kind of reacts to it. Right. What would you do about something like Mainspring? <laughs> Where would it go? Nobody wants it in their backyard. Right. Because if you look at Mainspring, most of the people that are at Mainspring, they're not even from Brockton. Right, we're right, not, right. We're not Brockton. We just happen to be a city. We're right. a gateway city. Right. We have all the social services here. Mm -hmm. So talking to your daughter mm -hmm. about it, mm -hmm. could you bring a unique perspective to that whole thing if you got elected? So yesterday, it was funny, um, a, a pastor called me. So I sent out my mailing, and I put my phone number on there. And this is my personal self, so anyone can call me at any time. If I don't answer, they can leave me a message. Give I'll it out so back. they know. So it's 774-257-0951. And uh, so I've gotten a few calls after the mailing and the pastor, he's actually housing people in his church, homeless people, to try to help with the homeless On problem. West Elm, I think? At West Elm, there's a couple different ones. And the one here across the street as there's well. There's a gentleman, a Cape Verdean gentleman, housing people in his um, basement. There are so many people in this city who are concerned about the homeless situation. And Mark, it's not simple anymore. No. We just can't just, it, there's not one answer for homelessness because now they're, the funding is bad. You know, they can't afford the homes. A lot of um, illegal, we have a lot of people who are undocumented that are homeless. Right. Like you said, we have people coming from different towns. It's something that we have to sit down and talk about and figure out. It's not a simple fix. It's just moving the shelter, unfortunately. So I said to the pastor, and he agreed, I said, we need to sit down. We need to talk about how we can um, fix this. My daughter, what she says is we need more homes, period. There's just not enough. Where are you going to put them? There's not enough. Well, they tore down 400 homes at one point in Brockton, 400 right. triple deckers. If you look across the street from Mainspring, that right. park there, right. there were probably 10 or 12 homes there, two and three story homes that were in disrepair. Right. And they tore them all down. Mm -hmm. We've built public housing, but not nearly enough not public enough. housing There's that we not have. Enough. There's some veterans housing, thank mm -hmm. goodness. There was a down in North Main mm -hmm. on both sides of the street and right mm -hmm. near the mm -hmm. near the shelter, because it's my contention that no veteran should ever be homeless. Anybody Absolutely. ever served our country. Right. But no woman should right. be ever homeless. Right. No man should ever be homeless. No child. There right. are families. Right. My right. dad actually when he retired from the parole board, he worked at Mainspring House for 18 months. Wow. So we couldn't get him home because right. he was staying after work and playing with the babies. Yep. Okay. There's a lot of folks in this city that are trying to help. So I think we need to kind of work with these, um, the churches, all of these organizations. We need to figure out this problem. But when people promise things to me that are unrealistic, it, it, it just, it's, it's kind of, 
discouraging because there's no simple answer for the homeless problem right now. There's a lot involved. But the more I feel that we support parents so that they can work and stay in their homes, the better off. Because a lot of people are losing their homes because they can't afford to and, pay the rent. And daycare. And daycare. daycare and that's why I say pre-K. You, you brought all right. your kids with you. Right. And I have students that do that as well. They'll, right. They'll say, I have no other, I'm either coming to class or I'm, I'm bringing my kid. Right. And There's no daycare. There's not enough pre-K slots so no. parents can work. There's not enough extended day um, programs, enough after school. So we can look at everything through the lens of education, I feel. The more we educate people, teach them languages, support them so that they can work, job training skills, so that they can, people want to work. Yes. They, they don't want handouts, well, they want to pay their bills. Every, doesn't everybody want the same thing, with, regardless of color or race or religion or, or sex or Absolutely. anything like that? People want a safe community. Right, right. They want a, a roof over their head right. that's safe. They want a good education. Let's go back to education. Mm -hmm. Education, to me, is key to everything. Mm -hmm. I, I grew up, my two grandmothers were teachers, my mother was a teacher, my dad taught at Stonehill and Massasoit, and I've been teaching for right. 26 years. Mm -hmm. You have a daughter that's a teacher. Right. Brockton, you said it a few minutes ago, you came here because you knew your kids would get a good right. education, and it's still a good it's education. It's still a good education. But it looks like people are arguing about education right now a few days before the election, mm -hmm. okay, with budgets and monies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So the city council role is to oversee mm -hmm. the budget. And the school department creates a budget, gives it to the mayor, the mm -hmm. mayor gives the budget to the council, and then the superintendent comes and represents the budget before right. the, um, before the uh, city council mm -hmm. to pass the budget. What do you think your role would be as a city council? You had three kids that went through the public schools. Mm -hmm. we, have, uh, we have right now a threat towards some of the funding. Right. We have a charter school in Brockton that a lot of public school money goes to the charter school. Mm -hmm. I won't tell you my whole rationale <laughs> okay. on that, but what do you think as a counselor that you can do? First of all, does it make sense that the different elected officials all get along with each other mm -hmm. and work with each other? Well, you got a school committee, a city council, and a mayor. say, better working relationships, Mark. We need better working relationships. One, one has to know what the other is doing, you know? So I think just better working relationships with school committee and with our mayor. That's what we need, you know, because we have to always think of the greater good, the community, the people that we're serving. They put us there to work for them. So we have to work together and we have to work together better so that nothing like this ever happens. I'm sure that the council and the mayor will straighten this out, um, but we can't let it get to this point just because we're not you know, working more closely together. So I think better work in relationships. Do you think the community is working together? Do you think the community is divided? We just got through, and it's not a current issue, I'm mm -hmm. just gonna be clear about that, right. the Brockton United Ordinance mm -hmm. that didn't get passed, mm -hmm. okay? Look, I, ra I chose to raise my kids at Brockton schools. Everybody got a, I, I, this has been a city of immigrants for a long, long time. before I was ever mm -hmm. born mm -hmm. and came here, but I thought it was great that my kids I mean, some of the names I couldn't even pronounce. We, right. we had two bar mitzvahs, and I had kids at the, I had more Haitian and Cape Verdean kids right. at the bar mitzvah than there were Jewish kids that right, went to right, the bar right. mitzvah. And that's what I think Brockton's strength is. It I don't is. think it's a weakness. Mm -hmm. So how do we unify people? Do we do a big, think about what people like, music, food. Right. Do we do a big festival and have mm -hmm. everybody come together? Right. Well, we each do our part. You know, I know I do my part as much as I can to unify people. Um, I think we each take a small uh, responsibility for that, okay? And we try to unite each other. And we stop using scare tax tactics. We give people the appropriate information. Misinformation leads to this animosity in this discourse and all this, you know, the stuff on Facebook, Mark, you know, it's oh. crazy. So I think if we give people appropriate information, what is the ordinance? What was it going to do? You know, um, and stop making people believe that we're going to protect criminals and all this other stuff. It, it's not helpful. It's not beneficial. When people have misinformation, this is how, this is what happens, you know, the disunity. So I think moving forward, 
helping people to understand what we're trying to do, giving them appropriate information so they're not getting it from Facebook. I think we could have done better, you know, a long time ago explaining what the ordinance is or is not. You know what social I mean? Social media to me is anti-social media because right. I think sometimes it's nameless, faceless people that have shadow accounts and they say hateful things about right. people. And, you know, let's face it, the, the elected officials, they're, they're public servants. Mm -hmm. They are paid, but a small amount of money. Right. Um, and I think most of them, if not all of them, are there to help people. Right. And that's what, that's what you're seeking to do. Right. So let me ask you this question, okay? We have the council at large race. There are two people that currently sit in the seats that mm -hmm. are running for re-election. Mm -hmm. And there are two seats where both of the incumbents mm -hmm. left to run for mayor. Right. So there's two newer seats. They're all open seats right, as right. far as I see it. Mm -hmm. But what could you do differently? Mm -hmm. to a new face, a new voice, okay? Mm -hmm. um, could you do something better than what the people are doing right now? Um, I'm going to make sure you have a couple of minutes at the end so you can sell yourself, tell the voters why they should vote for you over another candidate. But I'm just wondering if, if you could tell me. So I have proven leadership in the city. I've over the past few years have done things to demonstrate that I care about the residents in the city. I also sit on the um, zoning board. I'm an alternate there, so I've voted on a few cases. And I've done really well being fair, listening to the residents, um, listening to the arguments on both sides, and making informed decisions. When I was appointed to that board, there were people were a little hesitant, what does the nurse know about you know, zoning? But I think I bring, bring in that humanistic because um, a lot of folks on there are lawyers or, you know, they, the chief is on there, the fire chief. I bring in that human um, piece that sometimes you need in a council. You need someone that can relate to the community, that understands firsthand what's going on and can look at people and, and, and make decisions that not only will benefit them but benefit the community as a whole. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I do a really good job with that. I'm a uniter. I can work well with anyone. Um, and I feel like that's important in the council. So I feel like people should give me a chance because of that. My nurse practitioner is more in tune with me than my doctor is. <laughs> I truly think nurses rule the world. Yeah. Nurses, teachers, you really yeah. think about it. And if you look at the council, there's 11 people. So if you have different people with different skills and different, different skill skills. sets and yeah. backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it could be huge. It'll, it, it really right. could be huge. Mm -hmm. What got you into running to begin with four, you know, four years ago? To, to jump in. I think my organization, just seeing the need, I'm not political. Everyone says that they're not political, but, um, but then you see the need when you're running, when you're doing social service work like I'm doing, you see the need to have people that represent you um, in City Hall. It can only better and strengthen the work that I'm trying to do. So um, that's what really got me into it, was hoping that it would strengthen all of the programs and everything else that we're trying to do that's needed. I mean, we work with domestic violence victims. We work with people who have limited resources or don't know how to access resources. And like I said, parental involvement is huge. We try to make sure that parents are very involved and foster like independence, empower people, you know, to, to work hard and to give back. and. You know, so I feel like that's important work in our city, and it can only benefit us to have people on the council that understand those issues and want to make things better. So think about it. Power to the people. This country mm -hmm. was founded on kind of revolutionary ideas. Tax, no taxation without representation. representation. Mm -hmm. Throw the tea in the harbor because people thought they were being unfairly taxed. Right. If you think about things like that, mm -hmm. so you want to see participatory government, right. get more people involved, right. and uh, move things forward. Yep. I'm, I'm excited. Go ahead. I was going to say, um, and I think we've done that. I think the, the, the first run was great. I have people calling me, women, um, who are excited and they want to run. 
um, there are women running this race. Yes. So I think that if nothing else, I played a, a role in helping people feel more empowered to be able to get involved. So the other thing I want to say, Mark, tomorrow we're doing a cleanup. We're helping a resident here in Brockton, a 96-year-old gentleman that has um, code enforcement issues because his property needs to be cleaned up and he could possibly have a lien on his home. Mm -hmm. So my organization, K Verdian Women United, we're gonna meet at his home. I invited all of the candidates. Some of them I don't have their phone number, so I put it on Facebook and I'm putting it out here now. Um, I think it'll be a good show of unity. There's a lot of good candidates, Mark. Um, and I feel like this is hard work. It's not easy to get up and say, I wanna run for office. So if anything, like tomorrow, I feel like if we come together and show that we're doing this because we care about the city, we care about the residents, I think it would be nice if they came out and helped us clean up this gentleman's um, home so he can stay in his home. Can you tell us where it is? So I'm gonna I'm gonna give my number. I think that'd yeah. be safer okay. because I didn't ask this gentleman if Understood. we could do that. Yeah. So if people want to know how they can participate, they can call 774-257. 0951 and I can let you know how but if all the candidates I invited um, Sullivan, Jimmy Pereira, there's 24 candidates right there's so office. many we could clean up his property and he can stay in his home and we can show that we we're running because we care so that's a wonderful thing to do mm -hmm. and uh, next time you do it okay um, rotary groups like that too could help you out oh, right good. now it's election time put your money where your mouth is okay. show up you can shake a few hands later on. Right. Just go and do that. I think that's a wonderful thing. Good. I think it's going to be good weather. So I think I have about three minutes left, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to give you two of those minutes so you can talk directly to the voters and tell them to vote for you. Okay, so my name is Tina Cardoza. I'm a registered nurse for over 22 years. I'm a resident of 19 years here in Brockton. I raised three beautiful girls who all went on to, did well, to do well. Um, I have an organization called K Verdian Women United. It's not just for K Verdian women. We do a lot to help men and people from all um, different cultures. And we focus on mental health issues and community involvement, engagement, empowerment. And so that's been really great work. No matter what happens this election, I would love to, to get in there. I will continue to do what I'm doing in the city, being involved. I love this city. I love Brockton. I love the residents. As a registered nurse, not only is caring, you know, my profession, it's my lifelong work, and I enjoy this work, and I will continue to serve the city, um, hoping to serve you in the capacity of city council at large. So I'm hoping for your vote November 5. Thank you. What number are you on the ballot? I'm team? number five. Five, okay. So that's not a bad number. <laughs> five on five. <laughs> five on five. There you go. Thank you for taking the time. Thank I know you, Mark. you're busy today. Thank you. Um, few days, the sprint will be over on Tuesday. Yes. And then can get back to a normal life. And if you're successful, you'll, you'll be occupied every Monday night. Yes. And we'll get to see you on TV. Thanks, <laughs> that's great. Tina. Thank Thanks you, Mark. Thank you. Thank um, you. Make sure you get out and do your civic duty, Brockton. Uh, people fought and died for your right to vote, veterans, and um, it's your right, it's your privilege, but it's important. Don't let them say it's only going to be 30%. Make it 60%. Make right. it 80%. It's important. I tell all my students, if you don't vote, don't complain. Just make sure you go out and vote and make sure you know, let everyone know that Brockton is a city of champions. Thanks for joining us.